The biggest marker I would put on the conference is that, quite frankly, it's unique. One of the reasons I believe in revival is because I believe in declension. I believe that churches go down. And you see it in the New Testament. You, you, you see the letter to the Ephesians, that a church could take such compressed, high, glorious, mind-blowing theology. And yet, uh, maybe 10 years later, Jesus Christ talks about the church at Ephesus. And he describes the decline that, that's taken place in that time from such heights. Revival is almost always uh, accompanied by a large number of unsaved being saved, but it doesn't begin there. And that often is not its purpose. Its purpose is for the people of God. And unless the people of God are prepared for themselves to feel that sense of the presence of God, that conviction of sin, that longing for holiness, uh, that new joy in worship, uh, and that uh, passion to reach the lost, then they'll never pray for revival because it rarely begins out there in the world. It begins among us. I think what's important to remember is revival isn't something that happens to unconverted people. Revival is the, the reinvigoration, the restoration of those who have life. It's the, the drowning man who's resuscitated. It's the, uh, the defibrillators pressed to the chest uh, that, that bring life back and bring it back to a high degree. And it's then a revived church that has an impact on the world around us. Actually, what we need is a fresh view of the glory of God in Jesus Christ. We need our own hearts to be stirred with an appetite for God in all his glory and the holiness that then we cultivate as we know and draw near to God in Christ under the blessing of the Holy Spirit. One would love to see annual times of refreshing, springtime and planting and growth and the sun of righteousness shining on the church um, and uh, oh, our summertime of blessing.